Hello, friend. This is Legal Design Thinking in Real Life, a live series provided by Lawyers Design School. My name is Hannele Korhonen. I'm your host and uh, the founder of Lawyers Design School. And today I'm here with a very special guest, Jerry Levin. Jerry is a chief evangelist and co-general counsel at Contract for AI. And we met with Jerry at Legal Week a few months ago, and I was so, so, so impressed to see um, contact for AI in action and wanted others to get a chance to see that as well, especially as it's combining legal design and AI. So it's super cool. So I'm excited to dive into today, today's topic with Jerry. We'll talk about leveraging AI and legal design for contract management. And we'll see what that looks like in real life using contract for AI. Hello, Jerry, and welcome. Hi, Hanalee. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. So happy that you've invited me to chat. Great to have you. Where are you joining us from? I'm in Jersey City, or if that's not close enough, Manhattan, New York City in the USA. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Hey, let's let's get started. Let's first hear a little bit about your story. Could you st start by giving us a brief intro on Jerry? Sure. Um, you know, that that's a, that's a very wide open question, but I'll, I'll try to focus it on the legal concepts and the 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 part that people probably care about. So I am, as you mentioned, I'm general counsel and chief evangelist here at Contract Pod AI. Uh, you know, my camera is zooming in on me, but I, I did try to wear some of my Contract Pod AI gear today. Uh, I have been practicing for about it's 2023 for about 16 years now. Uh, I started out as a litigator and really quickly learned that I was I was much more interested in technology and how the law worked, getting lawyers active. And ultimately, you know, after several, I wouldn't say false starts, but several learning experiences, I ended up working, uh, ended up working on, in a lot of legal technology implementations and also advising companies on how to best do that while practicing law and doing contracts, uh, transactional work, all the stuff that doesn't involve me going into a court and arguing, um, which is my goal. If, I, if I'm not in court, I'm very happy. Uh, so about, about seven years ago, eight years ago, I became general counsel of a artificial intelligence company, an automation company called IPsoft. And in 2018 and 2019, I began a CLM journey after, uh, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit it, I failed my first implementation as a GC. After several years of doing amazing implementations of CLM and contract management and document management at other companies, uh, when I became a GC, I did a good job for legal, but a terrible job for the rest of the company. And... <laughs> I mean, it's it's not uncommon, honestly. Uh, and in 2019, 2018, 2019, I began a massive CLM search, went to all the legal conferences, and finally ended up, uh, you know, coming down to from 27 contract management vendors to to contract pod AI because I said my main goal is where is my team wasting time where are we getting stuck and the places we were getting stuck was communication with our non-legal parties and getting information back out of the contracts and contract pod ai solved both of those problems 20 fast forward to 2021 pandemics going on i am uh, I've done so much. I've led my company, prior company, through the pandemic. Dealt with all the initial. Dealt with the first year, uh, twelve months of the pandemic, and I began talking with Contract Pod and said, "You know what? This has changed my life. This has really changed the legal team. We're moving very quickly. We're we know what's in our documents. Everybody's making amazing progress with this. How can I be a part of this?" and you know, a month or so later, I joined Contract Pod as the chief evangelist, general counsel, and then it turns out I wear about thirty or forty other hats. Whether it's uh, you know chief happiness officer or uh, 
guy who talks a lot. You know, I get a lot of uh, I get a lot of fun and exciting titles. So I know that was short. I hope I covered what you wanted to know, Hanalee. I hope I covered what you wanted to talk about. Yes, uh, definitely. And I think it's super powerful that that uh, you have been a client first. And then you're really able to voice that client concern and, and their issues. To the I think I think one thing, and I know we're jumping a little ahead. One thing I think that's very important in the design journey for every client, for every lawyer, for legal teams, anyone purchasing is to know, is to have some experience in what you're getting because it makes it, it makes it a little easier. And you're right when a client says, this is something I'm struggling with. 99% of the time, it's something that I've also struggled with and and worked with my team here to develop a solution. Yes. Yeah. Well, what about what's your relation to legal design? What sparked your interest in, in legal design and design? Sure. Thinking? Sure. So I actually had no idea what legal design was originally. I thought you know, the first time I heard it, I was like, I was like, okay, uh, does that mean making documents look pretty? Uh, does it, what does that mean? And I've always been a huge proponent uh, as soon as I could, well, I won't say always because there were times where I wasn't allowed to make decisions. But once I was able to set direction, I became a huge proponent of how do we make legal better and you know, I, I think of legal design as being having multiple facets and yes, document and information design is part of that, but there's system design, process design, all of these areas where unfortunately, uh, whether you're inside at a, at a, in a law department, you're outside at a law firm, you're in your consulting, a lot of folks don't think about that, you know? My first experience was uh, someone sent me a contract that was just gorgeous and easy to read, understandable, clear, concise. And I sent that to my outside counsel and said, this is not anything. This this is for a different service, different functions, different different things. But it was so easy to work with. And I called up outside counsel and uh, you know, because of course, lawyers go to other lawyers first. And I said, who do you have that can really work with me to make documents nicer? And they said, we're, we have a team that's actually doing this. It's called our legal design team. They're, they're very small, but we're getting more and more of these requests. And what happened was I ended up getting this really beautiful document that was modular that when someone said, hey, I don't know what to do here. Um, if, if someone said, we want to make this change, I said, just check the box. We've already thought of that for you. Um, and since then, it's grown. But what came out of that, Hanalee, was really this idea that, uh, especially when at the same time, beginning the implementation of contract pot AI at my old company, sitting there and going, how do people interact with my team? What, what way do things come into my, to my organization's legal flow? Because I'm getting messages via Teams. I'm getting messages via Skype when Skype was still a thing. I'm getting emails. People are dropping documents off. So how do we arrange a process? Now, I know that there are some folks who really work on entire legal system design. And as much as I'd like to work on that, it's that's more of, you know, that's more of a global focus. Right now, a lot of my focus, although I do talk about that, is on process, document, and even team design for legal. Oh, that's 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 plenty already. So, so <laughs> maybe you can maybe you can work on the system systemic changes uh, I, <laughs> after uh, you conquer the world with. <laughs> I sleep, I, you know, I'll, I don't need to sleep anymore. So now that AI <laughs> exists, I'll, uh, I'll just have that keep me up. My eyes will be closed, but my, my human machine interface will still be running. Yes. Yeah. Well, tell me something uh, about contract for AI before we look at the demonstration contract for AI sure. and, and its history. Sure. So contract pod AI, as 
ContractPod AI is about 10 years old now. Um, I mean, for, for those of you listening, CLM has been around in its modern form for only about 10 years. So if you're thinking about that, that means we've been here since the beginning. And one of these big, big issues is, I think, at least for lawyers, has been, you know, we don't want just a document management system. We don't just want to store documents places, although plenty of teams, plenty of lawyers still just drop things into a shared drive, whether they're using Dropbox or, or SharePoint or something. And but as you grow and as you become more, more complex, that begins to be a point of failure for these teams, whether it was on prem SharePoint that you couldn't access from outside the office or that or, you know, simple failures, someone leaves the company and walks away and no one has copies of their documents. All of these all of these problems became really became apparent as computers and and networks became more and more pervasive in, in our in our daily lives. So again, I mentioned contract pot AI has been around for 10 years. I, I what we really came from was actually being an ALSP, helping companies manage contracts, manage litigation. And it turned out that the contract management and the the technical the technical knowledge was really a core a core need for so many folks. So when I purchased it a few years ago at my prior company, as I mentioned, my goal was everything's coming into me i have no way to control it i'm getting hundreds of emails a day i want an intake process i want automated extraction of terms uh you know from the document i want everybody to know where their document is at, at the time and so that's where it really came from and one of the things i think differentiates us and i know we're going to do a real quick one of the sorry one of the things that differentiated contract pod when i when i bought it and I still think it's one of our big drivers today is we want you to look and know where things are as quickly as possible in a and when i talk about document management versus contract management if you think of sharepoint if you think of a drive you're just dragging and dropping files into a into a folder things get lost versioning disappears if you don't save the right place it's gone with with modern clm systems like contract pod ai Everything is versioned. Everything is records. Everything is, you can go in and type a word in and see that customer, that county party's information. And I think that's incredibly powerful. And, you know, even, even in the market, the, the CLM market runs from very basic record keeping where companies tell me, oh, we use Excel. And I go, oh my God, how hard is that? They're like, well, we only have 25,000 rows. I'm like, I sit there and go, that must take about 15 to 20 minutes to load, even on modern computers. Uh, so the real goal is to get people in, make it easy to find things, give them the reporting they need, and make sure they know what's in their contracts and that that information can then have insights and actionable functionality with it. And we will talk about that a little bit when we run, run quickly through the demo. Yeah, that would be so so cool to to see and and let others to see how how you can actually make those contracts like living documents that are living it's, in your everyday life and everyday work. It's not just some dusty <laughs> dusty archive somewhere <laughs> that nobody uses. I I mean, when I have to go into a dusty archive, I put on my headlamp, <laughs> I get a sword and I'm just fighting through the old vines that have grown uh uh, although I may have been playing too many video games lately. Yeah. But hey, should we bring in Mar Martin to to see the demo demonstration? Yeah. Here. Let's. So my colleague Martin, who's been with Contract Pod AI since the beginning, will join us, and we're going to go through a very quick. Hi, Martin. Hi. Uh, we're going to go through a I very. Guess. We're going to go through a very quick demo of two things. We're going to talk about CLM, and then we're going to talk about the the modern way to think about CLM and how we've done this. And so, while Martin brings up our the Contract Pod AI CLM platform, and the reason I say that 
is because just a couple of days ago, we launched a new, a new product called, well, we at, at legal week, Hanale, you met Leah, which is mm -hmm. our AI and then, which is our most modern AI. And then we started saying, well, if this is so helpful for contracts, how can we use it elsewhere? So a few days ago at clock, we actually, we actually introduced Leah sidekick mode. And that's a whole standalone version of Leah that can do that. While it's good with contracts, it can do so much more. So, you know, what you're looking at right now and Hanalee, feel free to cut me off and ask questions anytime, yeah. anytime you need. And Martin, if I go too fast, just tell me to stop. But and those who are following live, please let us know on the on the comments if you have any questions. We, yes. we do have some comments unless they're all uh, they're all you. So that's uh, they're that's, welcoming uh, messages. Yes. Yes. OK, so I do want to say there's some things to think about. We really started with a blank sheet of paper and reimagined CLM. And we've done it a few times because what's what contract pod and CLM look like 10 years ago was different than what it looked like five years ago. And it's different than what it looks like today. All of these platforms are, you know, what we've done is really, you know, said AI is the future of these systems. We, we can't escape it. I mean, if you turn on anything, the first words are generative uh, GPT-4, open AI, Bing chat, Bard, Facebook meta doing this, uh, and everybody's into it. And it's really, really there. So, you know, Martin, I I'm going to talk through very quickly. And again, Hanalee, if you've got questions, you're looking right now at the main screen of our CLM platform. And you'll notice right there in the middle, hovering with those dotted lines is actually what we've called Leo one drop. And, you know, a few years, uh, even last year, six months ago, when you had a contract, you had to go through intake, you had to fill out a form to give people information. One of the things we're able to do now and is upload the document and immediately begin, the AI begins looking at it right away. So it starts reading the document for you. And because we do have a little bit shortness of time today, I would normally sit here and wait for everything, but Martin's gonna jump right through as though we have already done it. And I, for those of you going in the audience who are going, oh, they skipped this part, it's only cause we're short on time. Hanalee got to see this whole thing at yes. Legal Week. We've done, we have a video up, we have, you can call and make a, and view it on, uh, whenever you would like by, by reaching out to me or reaching out to anybody here. And we would be happy to, uh, to show you in, in real life as well. So what happens is Leah read that document for you. And now what, sh what, and apologies, because I've been working in AI long enough that they all become anthropomorphized. So I will constantly say she or he or, or they it's, it's just, I, it's not really there yet. It's not thinking for itself, but it is pretty cool. So what we've done is we've natively built the integration of all these AI systems, including GPT-4 into contract pod AI. So what Leah does is she reads the contract, tells you what to focus on, shows you what works in that contract and what doesn't work, and then allows you to support editing it, uh, as well as this drop. So what happened? Martin dropped it in, it extracted information. It began pulling things out, telling you how long it's been negotiated. So let's say Martin had actually been working on that document beforehand. And this has been sitting with Martin for two days. Martin is suddenly a lawyer, which he, I don't think he ever wanted to be. He's very happy, uh, working with lawyers, but not being a lawyer. But now it says, Hey, this came back in and there were changes or Hey, you know, I don't see any differences. So you're good to go. So we're natively running that redlining to pull it out for you. And then there's some cool things we can do. You know, if Martin clicks view executive summary, sorry, not recommendations, Martin, uh, Leah begins giving you a summary of the document. So for those of you who can't, who can't see this, we're actually taking the document and effectively compressing it so that you could say to 
someone, it, whether it's your CEO or some other executive or someone, hey, you know, there's here's the top things to know about. Here's the counterparty. Here's what looks like the termination. Here's when it started. Here's the termination date. Now, I may save myself some time, some effort, because I'm actually able to go through and check what this is about before I dive deeper into the contract. Hanalee, you look like you had a question, so I'm going to pause there for a moment. What I was going to ask was, to, so just to be clear, you 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 uploaded um, like a Word document. So this is like pre-signing phase where you are negotiating the agreement with the counterparty. This this is pre-signing phase, but we're yeah. we are an end-to-end -end life cycle system. Mm. So this this doesn't matter. And one thing I say when talking to clients is it's great if you can generate a contract and do the templating and all of that in the system. And we have a really, really powerful, full featured templating system. So that Hanalee, you come in, you say, Jerry, I need an NDA. You click the button. It you let's say you're a salesperson. And I'm sorry about that, Hanalee, to make you a salesperson, but it's fine. Say, I am a salesperson. I, I know we, we all are. We all are. I, 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 someone mentioned you're the head of sales, right? To me. And I was like, oh God, did I just become, did I just get another title? Um, but we're end to end. So Hanalee, let's say you were in Salesforce or Microsoft uh, dynamic CRM. You could click, you, you go into your, your account record as the salesperson, you click generate. And we'll ask, do you need an NDA? Do you need an order form? Do you need an agreement? And it's all templated. It will extract that information. But let's say now you got that back from that other that other side and it's red line marked up. Leah doesn't, we, we don't, it doesn't matter to us. We will take that information, tell you what's in it, tell you what's changed and help you work through that contract all the way from the, so if we go right from the birth of the contract to the eventual termination, um, you know, which eventually happens, no matter how much we want to think the the arrangement will never end. Contracts are a life cycle, hence contract life cycle management. So, so yeah, so this doesn't matter. Third party, first party paper, we can we do both sides. We do the entire life cycle. Any other questions on that? No, that's and this this particular feature that you are showing. So that's creating a summary. Uh, right of the contract yeah so yeah so that summary is there and then if martin i know you were you were gung-ho to show it a moment ago but we've got this recommendation engine now running now again for those of you watching we are not walking through the entire system there is a ton of things that we can do here but look at all this information that you're getting just as the at this top level view you know who you've recently signed contracts with. And this is something really cool. Recently signed contracts, these are with this other party. This is, I'm sorry, this is with other parties, but we can show you contracts you signed with this party. We can tell you, we tell you the stage you're in, we tell you who's been assigned, who's working on it, the average time and, and all of what's going on, as well as what you're going through in the and I apologize because it became a little small for me. So if I'm not looking at the camera for a moment, it's just that I had to make the screen bigger. But we could tell you with this other party, with uh, Magic Marketing Sales Company, on average, there's five days to contract. We've had nine other requests with them. There are three active contracts. Since Martin's, Martin really wants to do it, let's click on View Layer Recommendations. A and... I personally have trouble saying it. it. It is Leah, but a lot of people do say Leia, uh, simply because it is, uh, everybody likes to think of our friend, uh, Princess Leah, Princess Leia. Yeah. See, I, I get confused here, <laughs> uh, which, you know, if it helps, I'll put, I'll put cinnamon buns on my ears. So what we do with this, with AI is we've made it and notice, notice what you're in, you're in word. So, you know, all of this is happening in Word. You probably heard a bunch about Word plugins and Word announcements yesterday from Microsoft. This is, this is what we're doing. And what Leah is doing right now is she's actually looking at other contracts you, you've done with this party saying, hey, 
you know, and, and trust me, this is one of those big things that every lawyer, every person working this was this was the this was the feature that blew my mind uh, when I saw that on Legal Week. I was like, okay, this is this is what I always needed as an in-house counsel. Yes, exactly, exactly. Because how much time have you spent going? You know, I know I did something like okay. six months ago, and they had the same question, and. I can't remember which company it was, but I'm sure that we have done it this this before. Yes. Exactly. I have files, just so you understand this. And I, I we so we've all been there. I have files called Jerry's Riders, Jerry's Change Log, and every time I saw something or did something that I liked, I used to put it into a Word file. And sometimes I would go back into my Word file and go. That's what I did. And that's why I liked it. And, you know, I was good enough to put a note in to tell me why I did it. But, you know, when someone else would come and say, hey, have you ever seen this before? And having to go through that, it becomes really, really, it, it's very difficult. So now what we're doing is we're going and we're just telling you, hey, you know, you've negotiated with magic marketing before. And in the past, you said, you what we've agreed to is this and they accepted it so now two things one i could two, so first let, maybe three things maybe a hundred things i don't know but but uh first i know what we did before second i can now go back and say hey you know we negotiated this three months ago with you you accepted this language what's what changed in your in your policies that we can't go back we have to renegotiate this so and then third we're able to help you actually actually redline that and martin can we show that is that is that something we can show right now there you go so you know you can tell that it, it went right there and redlined and it's even prepping the comment area for you so that you can you can go ahead and make that comment now there are things we can do where you can see this word but word for word if you had not if this was a small change but because this is such a large change it's redlined the entire paragraph mm. so martin can we go on and show one or two more leah functionalities before uh so you know you're seeing this whole thing and it's found these five things we've negotiated before one thing that you probably want to know is why does it say balanced leah generated or favorable Leah generated. So we're not just looking at what you've done with this one customer in the past. We're also looking at what you've done with your entire database of contracts and then a full set of publicly available contracts that are on the on the internet from the UK, from your from France, Germany, Finland, uh Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Estonia, Iceland. I think I got them all. Uh all of the Nordic countries, mm -hmm. uh, and but the United States, Canada, all of these are in there. So Lee is actually looking at them. And for those of you who are concerned, none of this, none of your documents are being shared with anybody else. Nothing is being used to train anything other than we are looking at your documents and using your documents to inform your next piece of work. So I know I get that question a lot. I think it's very important to point out. All of this is running in a private environment that's only you only contract pod and only for you. So, you know, so for those of you who are concerned, that was one of our key design choices. And I'm really proud that we took this privacy first, this this exclusionary tactic to make sure that your documents are safe, your text is safe and no one sees what you're going through, because I know that comes up a lot. I can imagine that being the first question the lawyers for, ask for every every time. So, mm -hmm. um, so you know, other things that we can do here. There's there's this redlining assistance. There's explanations of paragraphs. There, uh, exactly. There we go. You know, let's say we can help you draft these to be more mutual. We're not just trying to make you win every negotiation and destroy the other party but we can increase favorability we can we can reduce your exposure and it's all based on your text as well as how we've trained the ai and taught the ai to understand 
how contracts work, how legal documents work. And all of this is designed to make lawyers more effective, make teams understand more, and even take in cases where there's preset obligations or preset knowledge, make it so that you don't need to go to the legal department to ask every question. If something it says, this is your preferred and it's been accepted 100% of the time, I may be able to go and say directly to the the other party the, to the sales team if you've done this if you select this leo will auto approve it unless it comes back redlined again and what you could see here is leah has actually gone and 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 tr tr attempted to make this more mutual one thing i always point out and martin i don't know if you want to show a few other things while i'm talking about this I know how important it is for lawyers and, and as a lawyer myself to have control of this process, to know what they're doing. I want to be very clear. We are not replacing lawyers. We believe, in fact, I would be terrified. I like the, I like working a lot, but what we, what we want to do is increase effectiveness, bring this knowledge that we all have and that we've got in all these documents into the system. And so as Martin's going through and showing some of the other features that are there in Leah Assist, Leah Draft, Leah, Leah Review, you could do this. And then we also give you, although we pre-built a number of these, you do have the ability to ask Leah to do other things. Martin, can we jump over to search? And is if uh, if that works? And then Hanalee, I'd like to show what we announced on Tuesday too, if that's possible. Yes, perfect. And for those of you who are watching, I know this is very quick. This is not a full demo. We're really focused on the AI and interactivity with the system today. Real fast, a lot of what you just saw is all here at a gross level, at a giant level. Sorry, Martin, I didn't mean search. I meant the the Ask Leah on the dashboard, if that's uh, available. Um, there we go. So we can actually, instead of having to, to go through and, you know, type search things, you know, a lot of us focused in the past on how do we make search more powerful? Well, now it's how do we make search more accessible? Because in the way it worked before, you had to go and say, okay, I'm looking for force majeure and I'm looking in contracts that were signed between January 2020 and November 2020, and I only want to see contracts that are over 500,000. You had to click all these buttons, create all these search terms. Now, a lot of this can be done. And, you know, to be fair, you see that there's 12, uh, over 1,200 contracts in here. Lee is actually running searches in the background to make sure that she gives the correct information. And we've been asking her to do a lot in this demo. And you know, she will come back to us with this answer. But I did want to show this is all chat based. This is all available in in this functionality. Um, and it's there so that you can make it easier and make it work. So of course, now that I said make it work, we're of course <laughs> going to go a little slower. But uh, there we go. Oh, there so, she is. So right now, uh, we probably could have phrased the question a little better. Uh, but you know, right now she say, oh, actually, this is correct. There were no active agreements with Magic Marketing. Everything's in negotiation stage. So she came, comes back and says that. Now I know, you know, you're probably saying, well, why didn't she come back and say there's no, there's no, uh, there's no negotiation stage contracts? One thing we've been very, very careful with is not coming, not having Leah come back with with excess information or incorrect information. Mm. So we have instructed her, we have coded the back end at the moment to give the most explicit answer possible without coming up with, without, I, I would say without thinking and going outside the box. I know that we're all, everybody's really excited. Oh, you could ask ChatGPT to do this. Well, ChatGPT makes stuff up. Yes. Bing makes stuff up. Bard makes stuff up. We don't want things made up. So we have said, you don't make anything up. If you don't have an answer, 
you say, I do not have the answer to that, or I cannot find that. So I, that's I hope, your way of limiting that, that yes. hallucinate, <laughs> hallucinating exactly. part of the AI. Exactly. Yes. I don't want hallucinations. I want mm. proper, proper information. Last thing I'll show and on in the CLM and again, full functional CLM, we have a full repository. What you saw was earlier was a repository view. Now we're looking at what we call deep sites. Deep sites is an AI driven dashboard that tells you everything that's going on in your system. It tells you about every document, how fast things are, how fast things are going, how you compare and to other folks, other companies that have similar contracts and similar, uh, a similar value to your company, similar functionality. Again, none of this is shared with anybody. We have aggregate statistics across the entire database. So if we know that everybody who has a contract named master service agreement, some, we, we can tell you how long they take across the entire cohort. We don't tell you how long it takes with you versus XYZ company. So we tell you compliance. This is really cool. I wish we had more time, but Leah and our AIs will actually score your contracts on compliance with your own playbooks, with compliance, with legal terms, with general ideas so that you can say, you know, we've been really compliant with, you know, our playbook says, says all contracts must be in Delaware. Now, what we can tell you is, well, you know, 70% of your contracts are in Delaware. 20% are in, are in uh, the Netherlands. And then three percent, and then the other 10% are in other countries. Now, what's funny is though, you, you told us your playbook says all contracts are in New York. So it turns out that actually your playbook, your preferred language is actually incorrect. And now we can help you generate better preferred language. I'm going to pause there. I know that was a lot. I know there's a ton of a, a ton going on there. Any questions on that, Hanali? Oh, it looks so so great. It looks so so great, and it it gives the, the I mean this overview as well, so that you're able to know all the time what's in your what's going on in your contracts. Right. And I I think this is a huge part going back to the legal design tie-in and yes. the legal design ideas. This is all this information that we couldn't have two years ago, three years, two years, six months ago, getting some of this information out was hard. But now with with some of the new technology that's come out, as well as real advances in the way we can analyze documents and analyze what you're doing, we can pull this in. And by the way, you'll notice this says CRO dashboard and sales funnel. This is coming from Salesforce. This is telling your sales team and all this information can move back and forth so that no one is so that folks are not are always in the know well martin so with that i'm going to ask martin to pull up leah's sidekick and i'm going to talk about one quick thing one of my favorite parts about contract pod is how much it saved me and my team from being the bad guys so a, a big part of legal design i think is also communicating with the rest of the organization so one thing you can achieve with CLM, with contract lifecycle management and tools like this, is being able to go back to the rest of the business and say, by the way, my CEO at my prior company called me in one day. He said, Jerry, sales are telling me it's taking you three weeks to negotiate an agreement. They pointed this one out to me. And I said, well, well, sir, you know, uh, Mr. CEO, I had, uh, and Martin's going through some things, right now so i will get to them but he told me he's like and he goes jerry it's taking you so long and i said mr ceo it's not really taking that long the problem i said here we sent it back i showed him my dashboard and contract pod and said look right here you could see every document that we're working on you could see every timeline all of us 10 minutes later a note comes out from the ceo's office to the entire organization this isn't it. This is a regulatory note, which we'll go through in a moment um, to the entire organization. And and my C, my former CEO goes, everybody, just so you know, it will it is never legal's fault that something's going slowly. I can see that they've turned every contract around in 24 to 48 hours. 
So if you are telling me it's legal, it is not. And that was just amazing to have, you know, the CEO basically tell the entire organization, 3000 plus people that anybody blaming legal was wrong, which is great because it, it really made me. Typically legal is like the bottleneck in everybody's yeah. eyes. <laughs> Everybody says that. Yeah. So I'm going to talk, uh, Hallie, I know you hadn't seen this yet. This is really cool. This is what we're working on right now. This is something I'm really excited about because you know, at Legal Week, I told you one of my dreams was to talk to contracts and be able to ask them questions. Well, we're moving closer to that. And now it's not just contracts. Leah Standalone, Leah Sidekick is designed to be used by law firms, consulting firms, uh, legal teams beyond just the contract. A lot of the functionality is shared between the two systems, but there's a lot of functionality in Legal Standalone that's aimed at the folks who may not be just doing contracts or CLM, we're able to go ahead and, and now go through three different things. But right now we're calling Leah Review, Leah Draft, and Leah Extract. So in, can you still hear me? I just touched yes, something. And yes, yes, yes. Okay. So we said in this one, Martin said, draft, Leah, generate a draft regulatory update note. Now, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot more that can go on here, but Leah goes in, she searches, she comes back with from real, real legal documents, from updates, from news articles about law. She comes in and, and research tools. She goes and she says, here are some key facts. And we said regulatory update note on, on data protection in, in the digital information, which is a UK bill that's going on to update UK GDPR. Leah goes and she says, here's the information I need. Again, we're, she's a little more creative here, but not to hallucination. She's just able, we've given her the ability to go search, to go build this information, whether it's from your internal knowledge base, if you're a law firm or if this, and to be able to go and ask questions about what's going on. So we were able to go here and say, say what's happened since 2021 What's happened since, and then of course, what's happened since 2017, uh, which I think was Brexit, which was Brexit, and go into that. And then we can go and start asking questions. What could we do? Now, I'm a lawyer. I could take this now and say, you know, this is good. What I really need to do is now prepare a memo. So now I've got some research to start with. I can go do additional research, but at least I've got the beginnings of my research ready. I could go through that and do that. Martin, I see you're clicking on something. I, I don't know where you were going next. So I'm good, just going to follow what you're doing. So Leah review. Okay, perfect. So much like the way we do the executive summaries and with contracts in, in contract pod for CLM with Leah, we're actually able to review policies. You can review any document, summarize it. You can ask questions about the document. You can go in and ask it to remediate something and tell you what doesn't match your pol your internal policies. So if you get, uh, I, Hanali, I could keep going forever, and you know this. So and uh, I just I just wanted to say how how I love this innovative approach. Like I want to talk to my contract, so it's not like I want to read it or I want to understand it or anything like that. I want to talk to talk with my contract. I, I just love it. I've never heard uh, anybody say it like that. I want to talk to my co contract. Well, I, I think talking, ultimately, you think about it, human beings like to talk. We like yes. to interact. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, now my son, my nine-year-old mainly talks at Minecraft. And I uh, see, I'm, I'm getting all these, I'm getting all these uh, Finnish and Nordic <laughs> references in for you. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I appreciate but, uh, that. And and actually, this this is separate. But we were mm. we were discussing yesterday. My wife and I were discussing taking a trip to Iceland and Finland, which is very exciting. I've been to Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. Uh, so three, I've got three out of six Nordic countries. I think you should um, become. I, I definitely want to go. Yes. Um, but the idea is, humans want to communicate. I don't just. I don't need to. I can understand something by reading, but I want to be able to ask these questions. I want to be able to say, you know, what could I have missed? And what we do know, and this is something really interesting that I 
that I thought would be that I think is is neat. Human beings, human lawyers are are study a study last year showed that human beings, human lawyers find about 89 to 92% of issues in a contract on the first run re read through. Uh, an AI working alone finds 90 to 93%. So they're about the same. Working together, they said over an I think the survey said over an average of over an over 100 or 2000 documents they reviewed, human beings and with robot, with an AI together were approaching 100% accuracy on these issues. So again, you it's you need both. You need both. The yes. AI does the AIs are really bad at judgment. They don't know anything. And, you know, I will uh, I will be careful with this because I want to be clear that there are things that really, you know, AIs are really good at. There are and there are things humans are really good at. But when we work together with the with these new tools, uh, it, we're even better because we're able to spot these. Uh, sorry. So what Martin just showed you, by the way, you're looking at just the remediation function. Now, we put in this code of conduct for suppliers and sustainability. Leah in this demo has been told, we have some policies of our own. So what does this, what does this cause here based on what it's seeing in the risk analysis, but also what can we do to make this better? So again, not telling you this is automated. This, there's no, you know, automatic remediation. Maybe I look at this and say, of course, I'm going to comply with antitrust laws. This isn't, you know, I need to know that we have to comply. But yes, I'm going to do that. But again, then it says, what should you redline? We're not going there and telling you, this is what you must do. AI, please do this. Uh, don't need any help. I know I may not have seen that because I would have said, I might have said, yeah, sure, you know, of course we're going to comply with antitrust. But now I'm sitting there going, well, what if they bring this complaint about that where there's an, a violation? Maybe I should say, you know, you have to give us 30 days to remediate or you have to at least let us try to fight a claim on that. So, you know, and we could do that. Case summary does what you think it does. It summarizes a case. And we are working to extract and be able to tell you based on that summary what information was actually was actually you know there whether there were key citations in it um and there's what so we could many do. so yeah. many layers to it so this is this is something that you have just launched this just launched yeah um and every day it's improving mm. um in fact i i think you're looking here we can extract anything from anything at this point so you know, someone sent this document in and, you know, the it, it this might have come through the CLM or, you know, maybe I'm working very quickly and I'm talking with Leah and I say, you know what, just tell me what are my six points that I care about. I just need to know if there's anything before I jump on the call that I should know about in this document beyond what we've already discussed. Okay, you know, here we go. We've extracted the information we've provided a, a an explanation and now you know as a lawyer i can go and say uh i can go and say you know what i know these i could talk about them or hey you know we may need to do this and of course the explanations are there in case you didn't understand a clause you know think about it we do research lawyers are trained to research uh, and for those of you who are wondering in the in the background, you know, well, what if I don't want to just use what you've produced? Uh, you'll see up there in the top right corner, custom model. Uh, we're not going to go through that because I know there's other things to do, but we can actually, you can actually create new data extraction models on the fly, whether it's from the data points we give you. We do have several, quite a few more, uh, but we have limited it for now to keep it keep it moving quickly but you can actually ask it and give descriptions and tell it what you tell leah what you want to extract so let's say i wanted to extract force majeure clauses uh i could say data point title force majeure and describe what a force majeure clause is 
Leah will begin looking for that and pull it out if I ask for that. Now, again, doesn't need to be a doesn't need to be a contract. Could be codes of conduct. Could be policies. Could be could be case law. Could be could be a letter from could be a letter from your 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 friends, and you don't you don't feel like reading it because they they wrote a you know uh, uh, they wrote a seven page letter and all I wanted to know was are you okay? Now I sound cruel there and crude, but you know the example is anything can be anything that can be a document that can be put in the system, or even if you don't know where to start. The the last thing I want Martin to show, if, if we can, Martin, can you just jump into the draft real fast and say, and do that, start a memo in my format. Um, so one thing that I think is, is kind of important is, and one thing that we're talking with law firms and consulting firms with is how do we make you more effective in a lot of other areas and of course anybody in-house you know i need to draft a memo i have a firm format how do i you know rather than sitting there and dragging it over copying you know pasting all of that i could say leah based on what we've got in this database based on our format you know how do we how do we prepare this and yes, you know, you're looking at it in a web browser right now, but of course we can go and you can download this in your format and push it right in and began, begin working in Word right away. So oh, you can, powerful. and mm -hmm. so, you know, I wanted to draft this memo. Not everything's there, it's not done, but I've got my format and I've got that mm -hmm. same thing with contracts again. This and the CLM can work independently, or they can go hand in hand. Um, of course, if you use if you use C Contract Pod AI with Leah in the CLM, we can push these right back and forth. If you're if you're using another contract management platform, or you don't have one, or you you're in a you're working with some of these other tools, you can go ahead and get Leah Sidekick as the standalone, and work with your existing tools. APIs are there, everything's there, but the entire idea is how do we make folks more effective and how do we make people better? And ultimately, and I had a note, you know, my, the, the, the real goal is how do we achieve more as legal professionals, as folks who work with lawyers, as non-legal folks, how do we make this all more accessible? See, I'm go I'm always going back to design here, Hannah. Yes. How do we make this more accessible? How do we make this ethical, responsible, transparent? And ultimately, what we want, there's three things I think we really see here at Contract Pod AI that I'm really focused on. I think our entire team is focused on. We want positive outcomes from this. We want avoiding frustration, getting to the functionality, getting to the achievement faster. And finally, we know these folks are, are trained professionals who are using it, whether you're a paralegal, a lawyer, a consultant, anyone in these organizations, you know, the goal is to make it without reinventing the wheel. So it's it looks revolutionary, but we're keeping it also evolutionary. Oh, I, I threw a lot at you. I threw a lot at the yes, audience. But Thank you so much. This is uh, this is this is incredible to see, and and in many ways, it seems like you have the the contract contracts become sort of like a data that, and then you have created this user interface that is right. easier to use, and then then any user I, can really dig into those that data that information in the way right. it's that it's easier for them to use it, and, and whether it's conversation I, or report or whatever. Yeah, I, I believe that the way working together on this and working together with the other parties involved in these sort of processes is critical because I don't think, I don't believe we live in a world where, you know, we're not in pen and paper anymore. Although I do sometimes get markup in pen and paper, which is always confusing to me. Um, but this is, this is really, really the most amazing. This is something that I've really wanted to see for for years and i am so glad the contract pod ai team had we've all aligned and really realized that this is where we're going and you know i'll, I'll say 
If you're not ready for generative AI, we have amazing non GPT AI that we are continuing to work on. We have our own models. We've been doing this and you can always learn more at contractpodai.com, C-O-N-T-R-A-C-T, P-O-D-A-I dot C-O-M, um, or just search for Contract Pod AI. Um, and if you're interested in Leah, just type in Contract Pod AI Leah and in the Google search, or uh, you can find it right from our website. Uh, but y- you could see, I truly believe designing for humans in law because we are not, we are still human, despite what other people say. Despite what everyone says about lawyers, we are human beings. At least I think I am. That, that's for sure. I, I paused there to pretend I was a robot. <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think that's it. And by working with these, uh, you know, working with your teams to generate successful outcomes and, you know, if if there was one thing I would have to say, and I know I dominated this, Hanalee, I'm sorry. I I this love is all, to talk this. About is this is all about you. <laughs> um, one thing that I do say is, if you're in this stage now where you're trying to figure out what to do, where you're not sure about legal technology, you're not sure about you know what happens next. Feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about this. But if you're if you're building this internally. If there's anything that I think people should focus on first in the journey, whether you're in-house, outside counsel, uh, you know, at a lar- at a consulting firm, or procurement, wherever you are, start thinking about how these changes would affect you and how you work with them with the rest of your organization. Because remember how at the beginning I said the biggest mistake I made was uh, I failed my first implementation because I made a big mistake. The biggest mistake I made was that I didn't know what change management was seven years ago. I thought I'm the GC, what I say goes. And that's not the, that, that there's nothing that could be further from the, from the truth. Maybe if I say, this is going to get us sent to jail, you're not doing it. That is, that's where I have, that's the, that's the pinnacle of legal power in an organization when it comes to legal things. But we're all interconnected so bring the sales team in bring the procurement team in bring in finance when you're thinking about these tools and say say how can we make this work with you how can we design a system here where things where documents and information flow so that's actually usable and of course that's that's the key all these systems are really interconnected sales is not going to do a deal unless legal signs off Legal is not going to go and say, well, finance, we'll just tell finance to, that they'll accept these terms for billing, that you want to get finance's input. Uh, you want procurement to make the, ask questions, and you want to be more effective as a legal leader if you're in-house or if you're outside by being able to communicate these ideas to folks. So always remember, there are these are other humans on the other side. Uh, well, I hope there are other humans on the other side. Uh, and they're, they're, they're there, you have to work with them, you have to take their needs into account. And I think I, that's the most important thing I learned. Yes. I learned in my journey was change management is the number one most important thing that we have to learn and that we have to work with because we have to work with other people. Yes, amen to that. Hey, thank you for, thank you for taking the time today uh, to show show us the magic of contract for ai and leah and thank you martin also uh, for being here and if you have any any questions please reach out to jerry and and, and i'm sure that he's he's happy to help you and and i promise i won't i, I will try to talk a little less but <laughs> you can i i hope i mean i think that this is just some of the most amazing stuff and i'm really really focused on how we make this better, more effective and really ethical. And so much thanks to you, Hanalee. It's been so much of a pleasure to meet you. And uh, thank you for having me today. And um, thank you for having Martin and me today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.